Okay, in this video, we're going to take a quick look at this amazing story here, this little diagram. Let's try to understand what's going on right here. So I have a dish, a petri dish, set up a little experiment. We have two sides to the experiment. One side has some food, the other side doesn't have any food, and these are supposed to be little scary creatures or invertebrates. The idea here is that a lot of behavior is not necessarily learned. It's innate. In other words, it's programmed into the DNA, and it means that organisms are born with certain types of behaviors. There are certain things that human babies are able to do when they're born, and they don't have to learn how to do certain things. For example, crying and they're very good at it, and it gets everyone's attention. So if you have a little experiment like this, and you have food on one side, and you put a few little flatworms, I guess these can be flatworms, the flatworms will tend to move towards where the food is. The food is giving off some kind of chemical signature or scent, and so these chemicals will allow these flatworms to know which way they need to go, and then so they end up moving towards something. That's called a taxis, and in this case, we're talking about a chemotaxis, or a movement towards a stimulus. In this case, it's a chemical. Flatworms or wood lice or certain types of bugs, um, maggots, for example, maggots tend to move away from light. That's an example of a negative phototaxis, which means they're moving away from light. There are some advantages to doing these kinds of things because it increases your chance of survival and also increases your chance of being able to reproduce and therefore able to survive until the next generation. And you can mathematically test this kind of stuff out using a chi-squared test. Um, in one of the earlier units, you should have been learning how to use a chi-squared test. I believe in the new syllabus, it's related to, you can find it in genetics, and you can also find it in ecology to do different types of chi-squared tests to test this kind of hypothesis. The idea here is that if you put a wood lice down or if you put a flatworm or something down in the middle, if they really didn't care, then you'd expect them to go to this side or this side 50% of the time, basically. But if more of them tend to come over here, you can ma analyze it with a mathematical test and then find out if there's significance or not. A good experiment to do this with is little wood lice, and you can very ethically do simple experiments to see if they respond negatively or positively to different types of stimuli. So in bullet points, here are a couple of things that you should have remembered, should be recalling from our little diagram that we saw. Most invertebrate behavior is innate, i.e. not learned, for example, in flatworms, chemotaxis, or moving towards uh, some kind of chemical element. So the effect of chemoattractants uh, to pull something towards it, chemorepellents, but the whole point of moving towards or away, that's called a taxis. So a taxis is a movement towards or away from a particular stimulus, and that stimulus could be light, it could be chemicals, it could be temperature, it could be humidity, for example. Um, so if you put a worm in a dish with food or another part, they will tend to move towards the food, has survival and reproductive benefits. You can talk about how these behaviors may have evolved through evolution. And finally, you can analyze the data using a chi-squared test. If you really don't understand this bit, uh, I suggest you check out some YouTube videos. I think I made one a long time ago. Uh, I don't think the sound quality is very good about Zac Efron versus Channing Tatum, preferences for those two dudes, and if it matters or not, you can test it out using a chi-squared test. All right.